And joining us now to discuss this is Vyaslav Tarka, Deputy Polish Ambassador to France. Hello and welcome to TVP World. Uh, good morning. Good morning. So we have just seen reports that on the streets the debate is getting intense. Uh, however, there is another side of things, namely uh, trying to navigate the situation in the wake of a possible takeover of power by the far right in France. Do you think that should it come to this, should we actually see a new government emerging led by Mr. Gendarme Bandela, uh, could it actually make relations between France and its immediate neighbours more difficult? Or is it more likely that in so far as foreign policy is concerned, the new government would in the end try to be uh, more cooperative than it may seem uh, at this stage? <laughs> Uh, it's a good it's a good question. Uh, just this morning, uh, Madame Le Pen gave an interview for the leading broadcasting station here in France, uh, France en Terre. And uh, in my opinion, she has suggested that at least in the first at the first stage, uh, she would leave the foreign policies uh, to the president of the republic. Uh, probably in the first mo moment, in the first period of a probable uh, taking power of power, uh, Madame Le Pen would concentrate on inter internal matters. But at the same time, she already um, uh, uttered a, a veto uh, against the delivery of weapons to Ukraine. So on one hand, supports uh, declares supporting Ukraine and the, uh, the fight of uh, Ukraine for uh, freedom, but at the same time is uh, against involvement of French troops on the Ukrainian soil. Now, uh, we discussed Le Pen, but I would want us also to take a closer look at Macron's performance, as now he, representing a centrist faction, garnered enough votes to, of course, secure uh, his place in the second round, and uh, Macron's platform focusing on the pro-EU policies, economic reform and social liberalism contrasts sharply with Le Pen's nationalist agenda, but we do know that Macron is losing on the domestic front. So what were the key factors that contributed to Emmanuel Macron's performance in the first round, to your mind? Uh, there were many factors, but uh, I think uh, many of uh, French uh, declared being tired of uh, Macron's policies, uh, of uh, destruction of, uh, of real political scene, and of not keeping up. What is interesting, for quite a long time, uh, unemployment was the, neck, uh, the, the main issue in France in every election. In the last elections, uh, the main issue is uh, purchase power, uh, pouvoir d'achat. It means that many French say, we, are, we, have uh, we have employment, we are employed, we have a job, but we cannot live with dignity on our jobs. So uh, pouvoir d'achat was on the first line, and on the second line, uh, on the second line, it was uh, migration and the problem with uh, with, with uh, in France. But uh, above of this all, I would say, was the tiredness uh, uh, of many of the French of Emmanuel Macron. And now, coming back to foreign policy, it seems like for populists, and not just in France, NATO is becoming something of a punching bag. I mean, we've heard Trump making ambiguous statements, or at least refusing to say whether he would stay in NATO or not during a televised debate. Uh, there were similar signals coming from the French far right, suggesting that NATO might not be on the list of priorities, to put it mildly. Do you think that in the end, France might decide, under a possible government led by Jordan Bardella to at least uh, make some sort of uh, decisions of this kind. Uh, would you say that perhaps uh, other methods of cooperation, such as the Weimar Triangle, could also be in danger as a result of France pivoting away from its usual allies? Uh, at this stage, it's very difficult to say. Uh, you should not forget that the summit, NATO summit, will take place in a few days. And the inauguration of the new parliament will take place on the 18th of, of July. So uh, uh, the session of the new parliament will take place after the summit in Washington. 
But anyway, the, the other point is that still president has a lot to say in defense policy and uh, in foreign policies uh, and foreign polit politics. Um, but uh, uh, already before the election, there was dispute between Marine Le Pen and President Macron about the uh, about the influence of the president on uh, on defense policies. Marine Le Pen said that uh, money and responsibility was with the government, uh, whereas the uh, presidential camp was uh, putting uh, had the role. A uniting role and leading role of the uh, of the president. So could this to lead to a constitutional crisis? The, uh, Vi uh, Vi uh, Weimar Triangle. I would say uh, at this stage we can say one thing that is quite clear: that the cooperation between a uh, uh, national rally government and Germany will be much more difficult than it is today. And of course, it should have as well some impact on the cooperation within the Weimar Triangle. So a very quick question, because we unfortunately are running out of time. Do you think that we might be seeing a situation whereby far-right parties in Germany and France, also potentially Donald Trump, could uh, set aside their differences when it comes to national interests for the sake of cooperating within the sort of broad alliance of far-right parties and groupings across the world? Or do you think that national interest will prevail? And in the case of France, it's often been about protecting its own interests at the expense of, say, the United States. Uh, you know, I would like to avoid every sort of fortune telling at this moment. Uh, but what is clear at this stage that the, the relations between uh, Front National, Rassemblement National, and AFD are quite uh, complicated because Madame Le Pen realized that uh, good relations with AFD after some declarations of the politicians of this German party would not be favorable for, for her in the elections. Uh, it is, uh, in, in the future, we will see. Uh, I expect that uh, the, generally the relations between um, Rassemblement National and Germany will be much more difficult than today. But we should not forget that there will be still a President Macron this, uh, that will be a linking uh, element between Germany and France. So, of course, while we're not we're not able to predict the future in any meaningful way. It's all about the appreciating the complex dynamics at play there. Wiesław Tarka was our guest today here on TVP World. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.